the vibration of this planet is changing, and we have been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. More importantly, everyone feels it, and it's really uncomfortable. You know how it feels, that uneasiness, the vertigo, the anxiety, the, just the sense of dread that something's wrong, but all it is is change. And so today we're going to talk about how to make the changes that will take you out of this resistance, which is what is the root of all of our discomfort, and start to track with the new frequency and benefit from it, which is the whole point of all of this. This change is growth. This change is empowerment. It's going to take us away from living our lives like victims and feeling feeling ambushed and trapped and uncomfortable and powerless and angry and frustrated and and put us into flow. My name's Sonia Choquette. Thanks for tuning in. I'm continuing the conversation about what on earth is going on. What is going on on this earth and how can we change the frequency in us, which is in our physical earth, so that we begin to track with this new vibration. Today, I'm going to talk about the missing piece the piece that all of this is moving us toward activating, and that is your sixth sense. So we are here in what is called a paradigm shift. Now, paradigm shift basically means your point of view, the way you see things, the way you look out the window of things, the way you experience life and understand it. We have been taught, conditioned, trained, indoctrinated, whatever you want to call it, to believe that we have only five senses, that we can't really trust them, that anything that comes from our sixth sense is woo-woo and weird, which disempowers us and makes us complete sheep and slaves to, to patriarchal authority figures who've been telling us how to live our lives because we have been told that we don't have the faculties, the capacity, or the intelligence to live our lives in a way that is authentic to us. Now, thank God, that is what is ending. However, we've arranged a whole system of consciousness and a whole system of response to light that has self-selected out and pushed out our intuition, our inner compass, our personal power, and submitted ourselves to these external forces and look where that's led us. Look at the state of affairs of the world. If it was so smart and so great, why is everybody so darn miserable? So what we need to do to pull out of this discomfort, which we're experiencing physically, is to activate the one empowering, natural and necessary missing piece, our sixth sense, our internal compass, and begin to let it work and use it to guide our lives as it really is designed to be. And to, to, it's part of us. So let's first deal with some of the attitudes we have toward our sixth sense. Clearly you wouldn't be here if you didn't have some experience with it, right? A lot of people that I've worked with say, well, I know my sixth sense works, but I still push it aside because well, I don't want to be a weirdo and I don't want to be woo-woo. And that's like saying, I don't want to turn my flashlight on in the jungle because I don't want everybody else in the dark to think I'm strange. Maybe they will, but maybe they'll also think, God, let's follow him or her because they have the light. In other words, what's causing all of our troubles is that we need all of our senses. And all this disruption to the frequency, See, simply put, consider it like going from an AM frequency world to satellite, that we're no longer going to be on top radio, everybody's ego, blah, 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 telling us what to do. And we're going to rise above and we're going to get to a point where our inner compass, our inner self, our spirit, our expanded divine, whatever you want to call it, self, which can see and sense a bigger picture than my or anyone else's ego can. And that expanded much broader, much more in-depth perception can accurately, safely, reliably guide me in life. Now that is going to take us out of all this collision that our physical bodies are feeling because it's asking us to get out of your head. That's AM talk radio. And to drop into your heart where your sixth sense 
lies because it comes into that heartbeat where your where your heart beats. That is where your spirit enters the body, and that sense is beginning to open up, and it's beginning to reverberate. And we keep squashing it down. Then we're going to have all this dissonance and discord and disruption in our physical experience, let alone in our lives. But what if we begin to allow it to come through, to expand, to to begin to shed light in all the darkness around us and start showing us how to connect the dots of the, the, the world around us so that we can make better decisions? Here's what the consequences are when you start to use your six sets. When you don't fight it anymore, you don't question it or doubt it or throw it away. It's like, turn the flashlight on, turn this inner light on, and let it reveal what your physical senses can't. It can reveal the way energy is traveling. It can reveal the way energy is moving toward you. It can reveal where energy opens up and you can flow in a smooth direction. It can reveal where energy is in conflict with your spirit and will steer you away. So we are at a point in time where it's common sense, it's logic that what's all this disruption about other than to encourage us to activate this natural sixth sense and begin to see ourselves comfortably as my new normal. I'm an intuitive being and my sixth sense is the first. It is the most important, not the, the throwaway sense. It's like, why throw away the flashlight in the jungle when you need it? And it's not just a little tiny beam. The more you turn it on, the more it expands until pretty soon you can flood your light all over and see everything from a different vantage point. So how do we do that? Well, first, check your attitude. Have you had enough experience to acknowledge that you do, in fact, have an intuition, a sixth sense that registers things? Don't think it. You feel it, but you don't feel it like emotion. You feel it like energy. Like, rub your hands together like this right now. Shake them out and feel the energy between your hands. That's real. That's energy. You can do it here. You can do it here, but you can also do it here and feel the energy around you. Now, we are being informed by that energy. It is giving us information. When it feels congruent, when it feels at ease, Move in that direction. It's matching the vibration of your heart, of your spirit, of your essence. If it feels uncomfortable, then get grounded. And the way to get grounded, which I've been talking about in the last few videos, and if you haven't seen them, please go back and watch them. Get back to your body. Get back to your breath. Huh. Quiet. Anchor. Look around. Notice what is right in front of you. Tell yourself everything's okay and I can make decisions. I am the power, the authority, and the permission to follow my heart and trust what I feel here energetically, not here, not in your emotions, but in your deep inner body. I can trust without needing to explain it. If it will start simple, does this feel supportive to me or am I considering relationships and commitments and decisions and direction that feels unsupportive to me. Can I, can I begin to trust what I feel instead of argue with it? If I'm getting constant information from within subtle little urgings to change my behavior or follow a new path or try something different or stop something I'm doing, because it's not congruent with my spirit. It's not loving me. It's not honoring me. Can I give that self, that inner feeling guidance, that inner voice priority? That's going to change everything. Because when you make that one decision, everything gets better. It's like getting off track and getting back on. So that inner voice is talking to all of us. And you can't ignore it anymore. Even though you're trying to say, la, 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 I can't hear you. You can. It's just not going to come in your head. It's not going to come in your emotions. So how do you know it's your inner voice? How do you know it's the voice of your sixth sense, which we should call the first sense, the most important sense? How do we know it's that one? Well, there's a couple of ways. That inner voice doesn't change. If you're hanging out with the wrong people or 
you're doing things that are really bad for you, whether it's drinking too much or eating gluten or eating one chocolate bar too many, it's just going to say, no, not good. It's not going to yell at you. It's not going to judge you. It's not going to give you a lot of information. Inner voice gives you a very quick, clear, consistent message. That's good. That feels right. That resonates or not good. Not good for you. Not resonating. And it's here in your body. It's here. It's a, So you're not going to get there until you get out of your head. And one of the ways to get out of your head is to put your feet on the floor, sit up straight, just take a breath, eyes open, look around, notice where you are, be out of your head, look at physical things in front of you. Oh, let that breath go. Put your hand on your heart. Here's the power statement out loud. If I wasn't afraid, if I weren't afraid, and I listened to my inner self, I would and then answer out loud. If I wasn't afraid, I wouldn't be here with these people acting like I'm having fun when I'm not. If I wasn't afraid, I'd quit this job that's so toxic for me and start looking for something else, or at least give myself permission to start that. If I wasn't afraid, I would start writing the book that that I really want to write, if for nothing else, just to honor my own experience and validate myself. If I wasn't afraid, I'd sing instead of keep my mouth shut. I'd speak up and and share what I really feel and what I really love instead of hide it. Do this for three or two or three minutes every day out loud as you go for a walk and look around. If fear weren't guiding me and my inner voice was guiding me, it would say and then fill in the blank. Now here's the interesting thing. You don't have to listen to what you're inner voice says. And I think it's important that you give yourself permission to recognize that. You don't have to listen. But what if you did? What if you actually did? You know, it keeps us from listening to our inner voice. Well, a lot of things, but I think honesty, being honest with ourselves is one of the first things that keeps us from listening to our inner voice. It's a siren going by behind me, so you can hear that's almost like the siren in our head. So it's kind of a funny, funny supporting message from me. Like, this is an emergency. I'm in danger if I listen to my inner voice when you're not. And start listening in little ways. Like, my inner voice is saying, don't eat that junk. Try something else. Okay, no big deal. You can try it. My inner voice is saying, Stop having sex with people that make you feel like crap. Okay, I can do that. I can stop being, betraying myself or abandoning myself. My inner voice is saying, you're wonderful. Be nice to yourself. You're okay. We're going to change your behavior, but your essence is just wonderful. And love that. Love you. And don't judge your behavior from... And, and confuse it with who you are. These are little things. And I'm going to keep giving you little things week by week because change is best approached in little steps, not big leaps because that stresses us out. Little decisions that make a big, dis- that make a big difference. So this week, what I want you to do is make the decision that I do have six senses and nobody's going to rob me of that. I have to learn how to use it. I have to learn how to differentiate my sixth sense from wishful thinking, from from my fears, from my drama and addiction to drama. I'm going to look at that and say, maybe the missing piece is what is going to, if I put that back into my life, maybe that is what's going to make my life start working. Maybe it's not working because I'm not using all the pieces. Like, have you ever tried to put together some, like, Ikea thing or some do-it-yourself piece of furniture? No matter what you do, it just keeps falling apart. But all of a sudden, you realize, aha, there's a missing piece. It's never going to come together without the missing piece. Well, that's what this week is about. Let's recognize the missing piece. And we'll begin from here as I continue going forward. Well, I'll teach you how to use the missing piece. 
how to understand it, how not to confuse it with emotions and other people. And I'll talk about all the things that are preventing you from using the missing piece because it's indoctrination. If we've been told for for thousands of years, you only have five senses and how dare you? How dare you challenge me and say you have six, you weirdo? Well, this is what's ending. That's what all this disturbance is about. We're never going to find our harmony and balance and flow without the missing piece. So that's what's exciting. And we're going to do it step by step. So this time, all I want you to do is start acknowledging, well, actually it is here. I have been maybe not trusting it, ignoring it, being intermittent about it, asking other people what they think. Maybe use it sometimes, maybe don't. Maybe use it. And when it does work, I, it, it works well, but then I forget. Lots of things. So put it in the notes. What is your experience of the missing piece? Put it in the comments. I want to hear. Do you accept? Can you be comfortable? Hey, wait a minute. I have six senses, not five. And actually, my sixth sense was the very first sense I was ever using in my life. It got taken away. I'm taking it back. My name is Sonia Shokat. Again, if you're here for the first time, please go back and listen to the other videos that are about the world changing because this is our moment to reclaim our missing piece, to actually begin to learn how to use our most powerful sense with the others. We're not going to throw away the other senses. And we're going to learn that weirdo is wonderful because weirdo is out of this world. And the missing piece isn't a physical sense, but it is physically felt. And if you're new and you're enjoying this, subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss this upcoming series because we're learning a lot. Now, you're never going to feel comfortable without the missing piece. And that's what we're talking about. Again, start by writing in the notes, writing in the comments. How is it showing up for you? How is it showing up for you? Because that's what this disruption is all about. To reconnect with the peace, the sense, the inner you that actually is more capable than anything to guide you, to create, to attract, to manifest. You can't do it without the missing piece. And that's what's so exciting. Okay, all my love, I'll be back in a week with more. And I'm so glad you came today. Put your comments, share this with others because this is what this universal up-leveling planet vibration topsy-turvy is all about to break open for the missing piece. All my love, see you next week. Bye.